the Marvels. A movie so lost in the chaos that is Marvel Studios that fans have basically forgotten that it's even happening and that's been delayed so many times you just can't help but raise an eyebrow. Now some might say that the delays are due to events like Covid and to touch upon stuff like the CGI which has recently, you know, been abysmal. Fair arguments in hindsight, I can't lie. And it's something that I previously thought myself. But there's a few things left out of this equation that we aren't mentioning. Firstly, if you take your mind back to Ant-Man 3, a movie that was meant to turn back the tide in Marvel's favour, only to fall back on itself horrendously, you'll be interested to know that despite it being the most important movie since Endgame, they reshot the entire ending just a month before its release. Yep, Marvel has zero fucking clue what they're doing. I mean, the fact they used an entire phase to experiment with zero plan for the future, basically throwing darts at a wall with every superhero that they have the rights to and just hoping for the best, rather than thinking about how they can genuinely keep people on board after Endgame, should be worrisome enough. But to reshoot a movie that's meant to be a game changer for the MCU going forward because it was apparently too dark and oh, it's this neat funny. <laughs> speaks for itself. And so this takes us on to the Marvels, which has recently been delayed once again for about the 50th time now, after rumours spread that test audiences, unsurprisingly, have demolished any potential that this film had. Hmm, I wonder why a film starring three of the most uninteresting and even dislikable female characters wouldn't appeal to the majority of your audience. Well, if you're a sane human being, you'll know that it's really quite simple. See, Marvel's recent experimenting is beyond us just trying something new. All along, it's actually been a plan to shove female empowerment and woke agendas in your face, which they disguise as important stories to be told. Don't believe me? Well, let's take a look at Marvel's new Empower series. But I won't do the talking here. I'll let the women speak for themselves. It's important to recognize yourself. You could watch it and think, people that look like me, we can be superheroes too. Ah. Uh, Let's not forget guys that superficial traits are what make a character relatable and someone to look up to, not their morals or values, their willingness to put others before themselves, their personal struggles, just, just forget all of that. Because as we know, any female character in this universe now is basically perfect from the get go, given the same power set to a male counterpart, only without any of the struggles or hardship that it took to get there. Because strong female characters, am I right? It's so important for women to be behind the scenes as well. We need all those voices at the table. Yeah, because that's worked out real well for you. If you take a quick look at every one of your projects helmed by a female writer or director, and then look at how they turned out, you'll realise that, in reality, your plan to ensure that women get the job, instead of considering the experience and competence of the person you're hiring, regardless of their gender, doesn't exactly work. We have the power to represent what the world looks like today. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking about how modern society is filled with people who all look different, you know, just on a day-to-day -day basis, then yeah, that's fair. But to pretend that in the real world, a female would dominate a man on every frontier, that a teenager would build tech more advanced than a man who's been doing it for his entire life, and that we should be teaching young girls that they shouldn't have to go through hardship or struggles, and instead, that they're perfect the way they are, and they only need to realise that, and anyone who says otherwise is a horrible person? Nice one. Anyway, having said all this, how does this relate to the Marvels? Well, director of the film, Nia da Costa, once again follows in a trend that Phase 4 was all too enthusiastic about in giving a director with one or two films under their belt a shot at a 200 million budget Marvel movie. But, but, but she directed Candyman and it, it was really good! And I'm sure it was. But Chloe Zhao directed Nomadland, a film which, ignoring that it was the year of Covid, won Best Picture, but look how Eternals turned out. Basically what I'm saying is that this film continues a trend that has done nothing but damage the quality of content that Marvel has produced after Endgame, and while I'll give Nia da Costa the benefit of the doubt, you just can't help but wonder if they're doing all of this to exploit the fact that a smaller filmmaker is not only more likely to go along with Hollywood's woke agenda bull****, but they're also much less likely to retaliate or question the messages or agendas that the studios are trying to push, because theoretically, if they were to hire a Tarantino, or a Nolan, or a Spielberg, someone with, you know, experience, and every right to make a film completely on their terms, with little to no studio interference, do you think it would turn out anything like what we got in Phase 4? Anyway, a big part of a film is its characters, so let's discuss the main people at play in such an exciting movie. Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, Miss Marvel. Oh. So firstly, let's speak about the frontrunner of this project, the woman who is meant to be the face of the MCU going forward, but instead has about 30 seconds total screen time since Endgame. Captain Bloody Marvel. 
Now, Carol Danvers obviously left a huge mark with her solo movie, a film that fans, you know, raved about. And since then, the character and Brie Larson's unique ability to see through sarcasm about as easily as a two-way mirror Is that like a person or something? have kept a special place in our hearts. And not to mention her incredible charisma and remarkable acting range, which finally get to return in a sequel where she's not even the main character of the movie. Monica Rambeau is a character that, for reasons beyond moral and logical understanding, defended Wanda when she took over an entire town of people through her mind-controlling hex, forcing them to live in a reality where they had zero free will and weren't even allowed to see their own families. But, but hey, you sacrificed so much, Wanda. Don't let anyone put you down for these horrendous actions that definitely won't leave these people completely traumatized. I mean, she got her pals through the hex, which I thought was pretty cool to be fair. But overall, she's not exactly the kind of character that I'm dying to see on the big screen. And finally, Miss Marvel, who is, well, definitely the least dislikable. She's very much like another Peter Parker to the MCU, a kid who gets superpowers, finds it cool to begin with, then realises that they're not really cut out for something like this, but ultimately accepts that with great power comes great responsibility. God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I used that line for this character. Please don't kill me. And helps save the day. But if I had to pick her or Spider-Man, it would be Spider-Man. And Kamala Khan is still not someone that I really care about. And her solo show was extremely mid and nothing that I'd really recommend to anyone above the age of 12. But considering that her show was the least watched out of all the others, but she's still the most likable character of the three in the film, speaks volume. Now, while it's only a rumor as far as I'm aware, some of the recent test screenings for the film didn't exactly delight viewers. And so the movie is undergoing reshoots. But it's just to fix the CGI, don't worry. Considering that this movie began filming nearly two years ago and has had well over a year to do all the special effects and was also meant to be released four months from now during a time where very few projects are currently being filmed or in post-production. I'm just going to admit that I highly doubt that's the case. And let's not forget that Ant-Man Quantumania has flopped hard at the box office, which I assume has forced Marvel into panic mode to try and give this movie a bigger tonal shift instead of just a bunch of bad jokes and cheesy dialogue that I guarantee made up the majority of the script. Is that like a person or something? So it looks like when you collect all the evidence at hand, the Marvels really is destined to just be another flop for Disney and Marvel Studios. But who knows, maybe it will beat Avatar 2 and shock the world with its female power. Anyway, are you excited for the Marvels? Because if you are, please let me know why. I'm, I'm genuinely interested to why that might be the case. Anyway, that's it for the video today. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Won't force you though. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.